What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 12 worst number 30 entrants in the WWE Royal Rumble history. The Royal Rumble is right around the corner, so you know we're gonna be checking out some Royal Rumble related uh videos. So we're gonna get right into this. We've seen uh, in a few Royal Rumbles, the number 30 entrant sometimes doesn't live up to the hype. It's someone that people either are not expecting to be in there in the sense of when you think of the number 30 entrant you think of maybe a big name a, a, a big wrestler in the sense of um how over they are or maybe a surprise return like the, it's the last entrant of the royal rumble so you expect a little bit more hype and excitement and then you'd be like wait what they, that's it that's the number 30 that's the last person oh okay so we're going to check out some of those instances. Appreciate all the love and support guys shown on the channel. Let's get right years, into this. Not a single competitor was able to win the Royal Rumble from the coveted number 30 spot, which probably means a lot of those number 30 entrants sucked. And well, you can read the title of this video. Yeah. Unless you can't. In which case, shame on your school system. But while the first two decades were not terribly kind to the Rumble's would-be final boss, the following two decades have been a mixed bag as well. You got your 2008 John Cena to set the benchmark, but otherwise, WWE has gotten a lot wrong with what should be the most anticipated moment of the Rumble in yeah. modern times. There are gonna be a wide range of entrants for loads of reasons, but let's get into it and see who did the number 30 dirty. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 12 worst number 30 entrants in Royal Rumble history. But before before we get on with this list, please make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it. And make sure you check out the latest edition of Survival Series, where our contestants try and name every single Royal Rumble entrant. And I mean every Royal Rumble entrant. Honorable mentions Wade Barrett 2011 and Tyler Breeze Greatest Royal Rumble. Gotta be mentioned because my lord neither did much of anything, but with an extra 10 or 20 people still waiting to enter these specific rumbles, maybe it's just best they kept the show rolling. Number 12, yeah. Randy Savage, 1993. I remember a kid in middle school once told me about a guy who lost the Royal Rumble match because he tried to pin someone before getting yeeted straight over the top, wow. and I thought there was no way anyone could be so stupid. Then I found out that it not only happened, but the perpetrator was none other than Macho Man Randy Savage, and I was and remain so fing sad about it. Could you have made one of your bigger stars to look like a bigger dumbass? As an entrant, Savage was an excellent choice for number 30. Yeah. I really should have won this match. If yeah, no, that, that makes sense if he's number 30 that's a perfect name to have as your last entrant but to have him try to pin someone like he doesn't know what the royal rumble is all about that's stupid that i didn't even know that was a thing that's awful being honest about it but being one half of the dumbest ending to a royal rumble match in history is just too much to be redeemed this just goes to show you are not about to hear a list of job guys who happen to pick a lucky number number 11 the warlord 1992. Everyone remembers the Warlord as the Royal Rumble punchline. Insert Tempest's impression of Luke's impression of the By the Numbers video here. But what people likely forget is the Warlord's role in closing out the legendary 1992 Royal Rumble. This one isn't as egregious as others on this list, because when 60% of the Rumble is made up of future WWE Hall of Famers, you don't have much right to complain that number 30 is only the Warlord. He lasted mm -hmm. just 103 seconds, so definitely not a performance that would earn him a spot on a positive list. The numbers don't lie after all but this match is just too good for this inoffensive number 30 to crack the top 10. number Damn. 10 tugboat 1991. Tugboat. the first few years of the royal rumble were mostly wwe trying to work out exactly what they had as a result some of the matches have storylines playing out some of the matches have laid out spots some of the matches had exciting tugboat. final entrance but for the most part it would take some time for wwe to figure out that the man dressed up as the 1920s tugboat might not be the best choice to leave a lasting impression on their most exciting match of the year. He's yeah. in the match for all of 152 seconds and gets dumped by Hogan, but I gotta say, watching this again has lit a hate fire within me towards Tugboat, and I really wasn't expecting this. Got nothing against Fred Ottman. Typhoon is cool. Shockmaster wasn't even his fault. <laughs> why was there a wrestler called F Tugboat, Tugboat going, and why was he the final entrance in a Royal Rumble? 
Number nine, Tugboat. Booker That's T, always funny to me. Now, name. let us fast forward in time to when WWE absolutely knew what they were doing and still managed to give us a horrible final Rumble entry. No more leniency, WWE, because I would love someone to explain to me how five-time WCW champion Booker T would be made to look like anything but the biggest goober in the business by entering at number 30, doing a spin rooney and getting stunnered over the top rope in 35 seconds. This has nothing to do with Booker T. This was just WWE getting their jollies from burying the WCW guy. Which yep, is that's literally what it was. That's, that's literally what it was, if you want to be honest. Booker T being number 30, that works. That makes sense. Only for him to get jobbed out like that? No, that doesn't make sense. And I love Stone Cold. But that didn't make sense. But all right. It's gross, but also stupid. Because I don't know if anybody ever told Vince McMahon this, but the WCW guys that signed with WWE signed with WWE. Use them. Brainless old codger. Number eight. Dolph Ziggler, 2018 men's. Oh, the first man. surprise entrant on this list and proof that just because the final entrant of the Royal Rumble is a surprise doesn't mean it's good. The story of the end of Dolph Ziggler's 2017 is so f***ing bizarre, resulting in this equally bizarre final uh -huh. entry of maybe the best Royal Rumble ever. So after some assorted losing, Ziggly Stardust went to the Charlie Haas School of Flattery and began imitating members of the WWE roster, then randomly won the US title yeah. at Clash of Champions. It was really immediately weird. Immediately said, nah, I don't want this and disappeared from TV. Then, a month later, he returned as the final entrant in the yeah. 2018 Royal Rumble and was eliminated in two minutes. It's just a microcosm of what Ziggler spent. I don't know what they were doing with him. I didn't have a problem with him being number 30, but it was just like everything that led up to that. They, I don't know what they were doing with him. I'm glad he's doing this thing in TNA. I saw his uh, debut there. Um, I'm glad. And I hope he's able to make uh, a bigger name for himself. You know, or, you know, I know obviously the audience for WWE is bigger, but in the sense of I hope he's able to do the things that he wants to do, get himself over at another company. I'm not saying that he should come back to WWE, but sometimes you have to leave. We've seen it so many times. Sometimes you have to leave for them to even treat you right. For them to even look at you in a different light. He may not want to ever go back, and that's fine. But I hope he does what he wants to do, and his name gets bigger out there. Because he deserves it. He's a fantastic wrestler, man. Wishing nothing but the best for Dolph Ziggler. Spent a decade doing in WWE, going in circles with baffling creative choices that ultimately left him right back where he was. I mean, if he really wanted to be cheeky, he could have come out to Daniel Bryan's music before his record scratch. But given that this rumble was in Philadelphia, same venue as the dreaded 2015 rumble, maybe kicking the Daniel Bryan hornet's nest wouldn't have been the right call. No. Number seven, Carmella, 2019 women's. As we dive deeper into the depths of Dirty 30s, we are going to really start getting to the heart of how to f this up. Let me tell you right now, telling us who number 30 is ahead of time is a damn fine way to make it happen. The final yeah. entrant of a Royal Rumble match is what the previous 29 had been building to, and people just want to feel excitement when it happens. Knowing is 100% of the battle when it comes to the excitement in the Royal Rumble, and while Carmella's run in the match was perfectly fine, one elimination in seven minutes, this secret is undoubtedly one that is much better kept. Number yeah, six, facts. Nia Jax, 2020. In 2023, Nia Jax made history by becoming the first person to ever return to wrestling after saying they were done forever, and she did this in the Royal Rumble match. Oh, I'm sorry, did I start too early i have no idea how that happened we've literally done this hundreds of times <laughs> As a run in a rumble, this wasn't very good getting eliminated by the opposition in two minutes but you do get bonus demerit points when your royal rumble return entrance gets beyond repair because yeah. someone in the truck actually jumped the gun and hit naya's music before the countdown that's what made this one kind of hilarious because they already hit her music before the countdown was done so we knew oh oh it's naya okay they kind of spoiled the surprise there. Whoever did that, you're fired in the back. How does that happen? Number five, Don't know. Nia Jax, 2019 men's. Oh, she's on here again. <laughs> so you know that problem we had with Carmella earlier? We were set to have the same problem in the men's match with R-Truth scheduled to get the final spot. And then we all thought to ourselves, WWE has to have something planned, right? And well, 
Something sure would be the operative word there. Yeah. Never in my life have I felt more like I have been having a fever dream while watching a Royal Rumble than when Nia Jax took out R-Truth and entered herself in the 2019 Men's Royal Rumble. Even as I watch back Nia getting pinballed around the ring by everyone <laughs> hitting their finishers, I cannot fathom what the idea was here. Absolute befuddlement. Was it just to do the single most illogical thing possible? Because I mean, a decision like this truly needs to be recognized by NASA or something. Number four. Not gonna lie to you, even though that made no sense, I enjoyed that shit. Even though our truth deserved better, he's a fucking national treasure. I enjoyed seeing Naya get hit with all the finishers, and especially that RKO. I, en I enjoyed it. Damn. Oh, shit. Hold on. I think I enjoyed it a little bit too much. I lost my, my voice there. Mm. Yeah. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Natalia, 2021, women's. I know I have blocked out a lot of pandemic wrestling, so I won't blame y'all if you have too, but I will be the asshole that reminds everyone of the time WWE announced something so stupid that it generated enough backlash from fans to get it changed, which is like hitting a bullet with a smaller bullet whilst wearing a blindfold, riding a horse. <laughs> the week of the Rumble, WWE announced that on backstage of all things, they would reveal who the number 30 entrant in the men's Rumble was going to be, and understandably, this caused as violent a protest as wrestling fans can wage online, and WWE changed course because, yeah, hey kids, let me just tell you all what you're getting for Christmas, too. No. Like, no, what the f? Why? So instead, Edge and Randy Orton were revealed to be entering number one and two, while Natalia and Tamina would wrestle a match for the number 30 spot in the Women's Rumble, to which fans everywhere threw up their hands and said, f***ing fine, I guess, whatever. And we moved on. And yep, it was just Natalia. Comes in, two minutes, comes out, exactly as they told us it would happen. 34 Royal Rumble events had taken place to this point, and WWE still f***ed this up. Number three, Duke the Dumpster Drossy. I don't know why they, they have this infatuation with telling us who's the number 30 spot. It should be a surprise. Don't tell us. Let us be surprised either in a good way or disappointed because of the lack of excitement for whoever comes out at 30. 1996. Third time's the charm with announcing the number 30 entrant ahead of time. Or maybe I should say first time's the charm because the first time WWE announced the number 30 entrant ahead of time was probably the most offensive. Maybe I should give more leniency to the older match, but no timeline would promoted number 30 entrant and resident trash man jobber <laughs> Duke the Dumpster Drossy have garnered any excitement. Not even in the universe where we are all trash men and Drossy is our king. It still would have been better kept a secret. So really, on your ninth try at doing a Royal Rumble, you should know better than to have a literal job guy win the most exciting spot in your most exciting match. A jobber match. for At sure. At least Carmella and Natalia were former champions with some credibility. This was Duke the Dumpster Drossy, who beat Triple H to earn the number 30 spot and then got eliminated after a minute. How WWE <laughs> didn't learn from this lesson is beyond me. After all, it's not as if the company has a tendency to f their fans or anything, right? Number two, Roman Reigns, mm. 2017. Oh yeah, I remember the hype of the 2017 Royal Rumble match. So many potential winners with mega stars like Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, and The Undertaker, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens looking like potential challengers for then champ Kevin Owens, or maybe we'd finally see the main roster debut of Samoa Joe, who could go on and face John Cena or AJ Styles if he won. And then the match underdelivered because all of those megastars were left to enter at the very end and the rest of the field was mostly folks like Apollo Crews and Mojo Rawley and Kalisto and James Ellsworth, but we still had number 30. Even after a so-so rumble, everything would be saved with an epic number 30. But you know what? Sometimes the Samoan Joe you want isn't the Samoan Joe you get. Yeah. Because rather than Samosa Joseph himself, we did indeed get Roman Reigns, who had competed for the Universal Championship on that show at the height of the Roman uh -huh. Reigns hate. You just know Vince McMahon had the biggest f***ing smile on his face in Gorilla. I remember that, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, my bro. Just the hatred for this nigga, bro, <laughs> at that time was nuclear <laughs> uh, while everyone in san antonio realized they had once again paid to be f***ed with by an insane old man no shade to roman himself of course yeah he was just doing his job, job here yeah. but this is number two because it was wwe giving a middle finger to their fans which they had totally never done before and number one ray mysterio 2014 i had a feeling ray was gonna be on here and we all love ray but we know why this we know why no one wanted to see Ray at number 30. 
Green. Man, if you need an even better example of someone on this list through no fault of their own, here it yeah. is. Rey Mysterio is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. But it didn't matter who you were, nope. what your name was, or nope. why you were there. Because nope. to WWE fans in January of 2014, yep. not a single other human on the planet would have been an acceptable number 30 entrant and winner in the 2014 yep. Royal Rumble match than Daniel, Daniel Bryan. Bryan. Yep. How else would you know the Royal Rumble is just around the corner if we didn't talk about the 2014 Rumble? It's documented to hell and back. Bryan was kept out of the match. The fans in the building didn't know it, and they rained down hellfire and vengeance on poor Rey uh -huh. Mysterio, who was booed vociferously until his elimination because this, more than any other number 30 entrant in Royal Rumble history, was an example of WWE being bound and determined to not give their fans what, what they, they wanted. wanted. Yep. And for that, it is the worst of all time. And that's our list. Please make sure that you- Nah, fair point, bro. It was one of the worst entrants from 30 entrants of all time, and it sucked because it was Rey. And like he said, it didn't matter who it was. If it wasn't Daniel Bryan, no one wanted to see it. People had hope. Well, hey, he did lose against Bray, but he has a chance to be in the Royal Rumble because the match they have, which was a match of the year, damn near contender, between Bray, Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan, they had that at the beginning of the show. So you're like, okay, well, they got plenty of time. He got to be in there. And they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Poor Ray. <laughs> he got booed into a ble I've never seen Ray get booed like that. All because we all wanted Daniel Bryan to be number 30. So we just wanted him to be in the in the Royal Rumble. But we only had <laughs> that 30, the 30 spot. That was it. So it he it was either it was gonna be him or nothing. And we saw what happened. Comment down below. Let me know what's the worst, I guess, Royal Rumble surprise entrant you can think of. Obviously, not talking about someone that came in at number 30, but just in general. Like, you felt like that was a wasted Royal Rumble entrant spot. Like, it could have been given to somebody else. Let me know, because there's been a few where you're like, they could have gave this to somebody else. Why is this person taking up someone else's spot? Like, what's the point in this? Let me know down below, because there's a few. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K, and I'm still here in the speed of YouTube, wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.